Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about using the Excel Import Utility. The goal of this video is to help you find an export from your general ledger that will be a quality import template for loading data into Plain Guru. The benefits of importing from Excel versus manually entering data are so significant that it's worth a small investment in time to find a good import template. So here are the key learning concepts. First, we must load a full chart of accounts. Um, this means we can't import the balance sheet and income statement separately. They must be imported together. Uh, next, I'll talk about some of the best template formats. For example, during your first import, it's good to have a report that's going to show multiple years, uh, excuse me, multiple periods and potentially multiple years of data. This way, if we have one report, that has all of our historical data, we can get that first import done without having to run through the import process several times. The third concept is to try and avoid export formats that have excess headers, labels, or summation rows. Um, we only want to import the accounts into Plain Guru. We don't want to import subtotals because that's going to lead to a double counting effect. Lastly, your accounts will only need to be mapped once so long as you adhere to some general principles. Now I'm going to go into each one of these concepts in a little bit more detail. So as I just previously stated, you need to import your full chart of accounts at the same time. In this example, I printed out two reports from my, jar my general ledger. One is a balance sheet, one is an income statement. Now if we look at the format of these reports, I've got my months across the top. In this case, I'm looking at the balance sheet. I have my cash down the side, or excuse me, my accounts down the side. And again, multiple periods of data. The income statement follows a similar format. But again, as I had previously noted, we can't import these two financial statements separately. So the quick workaround is I'll go ahead and I'll add a new tab to this income statement. I'll paste the income statement in there. I'll go to the balance sheet. I'll grab all of my data and simply copy and paste it into the new tab on my income statement worksheet. This way I have a full chart of accounts that's been constructed from a balance sheet and income statement report. And again, as long as the accounts are in a call excuse me, account names, account descriptions are in a common column and the dates line up in the report, then I should be good to go. The other report format that works is more of a trial balance report. So in this report, I simply have all of my accounts listed with no financial statement totals, no groupings or anything like that. Certainly one of, ben one of the benefits to this format is Typically, as I export it out of my general ledger, I have a full set of accounts, so there's no need to run two reports and combine the results. Typically, the downside to using more of a trial balance format is many GL systems will only allow you to produce a trial balance report for one period. And again, if we're running this import for the first time and we're trying to import multiple periods of data, a format with one period of balances may cause us to, to run the import process several times rather than once. So this modified trial balance report that I have here actually shows one full year of data. If you can produce a report like this straight out of your ledger, this is probably the best format. As I previously noted, it's best to avoid report formats that have excessive header rows subtotal rows if possible. We can exclude these rows, or excuse me, we will want to exclude these rows from the import, but we can manually exclude them when we're assigning accounts. Now what I mean by that is these rows here. So these are two headers that are being generated on the report out of my general ledger. I don't want to import these headers into Plain Guru nor do I want to import this total construction income row. Total construction income is actually a subtotal. 
Whereas what we really want is we want the underlying accounts from your GL. We can recreate this subtotal in Plan Guru, but we don't want to import it. Same thing for total revenue. This number will be generated for you in Plan Guru. Importing the total from your report will result in double or triple counting potentially. Now using this statement format here, I'll quickly run through the import process so you can see how I would map these accounts and exclude my headers and total rows. So with a blank Plan Guru analysis template set up, I'll begin the import process by going to File, Import Data, Import Balance Sheet and Income. Now one thing to note is my Excel file that I'm importing from must be closed prior to running the import process. Now I'll navigate to that Excel file on my desktop. Highlight the file, click OK, and then click Next. Now again, I want to import from my complete set of financials, including balance sheet and income statement. First, I'll identify my columns. I do this by right-clicking the top of the column and selecting Add Column Selection. Because these are descriptions, I'll select Account Description. Now I'd like to highlight my data columns. I can simply drag across, select my range, right-click, click Add Column Selection, click Balance, and then I can go through and check off each of my periods. Then click OK, and then I'll click Next. The next part of the import process is the Assign Accounts screen. From here, I'll be mapping the accounts per my import file on the left side here to the Plan Guru analysis. Now as I previously noted, we'll want to exclude headers and subtotal rows. Now what I could have done is I could have deleted these rows from my import file, but because I didn't do that, my other alternative is to selectively map accounts in, into the Assign Accounts dialog. I'll do that by not mapping these two rows and start by grabbing my construction income accounts. Now I map these rows, I can either do it one at a time or multiple rows simultaneously. To perform the mapping operation, I highlight the account, right click, drag, and drop under the class and subclass where I want to map it. So once I release the right click button, the accounts get mapped. The same operation works for a range of accounts. I simply highlight, right click, drag, and drop. It'll give me the option to either group them or assign them individually. And again, I'll want to exclude my subtotal rows, such as total construction income. And with, with revenue done, I'll move on to cost of sales. Then operating expenses. Again, excluding my subtotal rows. One quick item to note, mapping cash and cash equivalents and retained earnings works a little bit differently because these are special accounts. To map these, I right click drag and drop on top of the cash and cash equivalents description. Same with retained earnings. Also, note that on your balance sheet, you're going to see the presence of more subclasses. For instance, under, other, under current assets, I have cash, trade receivables, inventory, other current assets. You can speed up analysis setup if you're mapping these to the correct locations. For example, I'll map trade receivables to trade receivables and accounts receivable as well. Employee advances, prepaid insurance will get mapped to other current assets. And with, all, with my entire balance sheet and income statement mapped, I'll finish the process by clicking import. So as you can see, the chart of accounts has been imported. 
I can show the historical data by clicking this button here and I can expand the individual months by clicking the column and as you can see all of my information from my income statement and balance sheet has been imported into Plan Guru. After having seen this you'll notice that the import utility imports your chart of accounts as well as balances. Now if you've already manually set up your chart of accounts in Plan Guru, not through the import utility, you can still use the import utility for future imports. But what you'll have to do is you'll have to assign the accounts from your import file to your pre-existing Plan Guru categories. To show you how that works, I'll perform that real quick. I'll go to File import data, import balance sheet and income statement, and again select my import file. Click next, and again I'll assign my columns. Now in this case, notice that my all of my accounts have already been manually set up in Plain Guru, but none of the accounts are mapped. I can tell that they haven't been mapped because the assigned checkbox is not checked. Map the accounts from the import file to Plan Guru using the same process. This time I'm going to take construction income, place it on top of construction income, and click link. This has now linked that row from my import file to the account that was previously created in Plan Guru. Now I'm going to have to do this one by one, but again, once these links are established, they will be retained in the future. And the last thing I'd like to talk about is making sure your import assignments are retained. Now, one of, the, one of the ways that the assignments get lost is if account descriptions change, if accounts are removed from a report and then re-added, um, that could cause uh, that particular account to get unmapped. And exi for example, let's say this account changes from construction income to construction income revenue. A bit redundant, but just to prove a point. Now the next time I rerun the import process, notice that construction income revenue is not mapped because the account description has changed on, the, on my import file. So again, to make sure that those mappings are retained, make sure the report that you're in for inputting from has consistently named accounts 